Welcome to the King of Games show. This is a uh, this is the first episode of the King of Games, which is a show based on the cartoon Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, this show is a part of the of the Screeching Dog Ned Network, which you can find on ScreechingDog.com. Um, my my, my name is Mark. I'm the host of of the show, and with me is our resident Yu-Gi-Oh expert, Alex. Say hi. Hello. Um. On this show, we will be discussing the um the episodes of the first season of a Yu-Gi-Oh, and because there are so many episodes in each season, and there are so many seasons. Um, this show will probably go on for several for several years. Um, how this show will 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 work is that we will go through two 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 episodes for each show, and we will release the shows um, every other week on Sunday. Um, so we will do two shows a month, and then probably during the uh, summertime when we have more time and less things going on, we will probably do a show every single every single week. And what we are doing is the first incarnation of the American version of the of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, TV show. Um, as most Yu-Gi-Oh fanatics know, that there is a Japanese version, and there is a, and then there is an American version. So, and the Japanese ver, uh, a version, the the season that we are starting with is actually the second season of the a Japanese of a version, but the first season. Of the American uh, version, so like, like I said, we are, are just going to do the one that came on the uh, seed on the uh, CW for so many years. Eat your heart, Japan. Yes. So what we are going to do is go ahead and start off with episode one, which is known as the heart of the cards. Um, now we have actually watched. All of these episodes, probably the entire first run of the Yu-Gi-Oh fran uh, franchise, I'd say about 10 years ago. Yes. But because it's been so long, we had to go back and we had to watch the uh, first two in order to basically re uh, re a member. Um. So be, be, before we get into the details of episode one, why don't you uh, give us your thoughts um, about the episode that we had just watched? One or two? One. Um, well, for one thing, Kaiba is a prick. Yeah, pretty much. That's all that I can say. <laughs> That's all that, that you want to say, huh? Well, not all that I want to say, but all that I can say um, about him. Okay. I also don't get why they explain the whole puzzle thing in episode two and not number one. Yes, that was very um, – in episode one, they briefly mentioned the – what was it? The Millennium a Puzzle? Yes, sir. But they didn't explain it until episode two, which you had an idea that actually episode two – Two, episode one was just a pilot, and that in reality episode two was the first episode. That seems logical. Yes. Um. Okay, in the first episode, we are introduced to um, Yugi Amoto and Taya and Tristan and. Joey. Joey. Joey a Wheeler. Um, and they are at their high school at Domino High School, and Yugi Moto is teaching Joey how to play dual dual monsters. Which now this show does have a corresponding card game, which is 
you know, in reality, it's it, it's called Yu-Gi-Oh, but in the TV show, it is called Dual Dual Mo- uh, Monsters. Why they had two two different names is way beyond me. Yes, it's very very strange. But in this one, Joey is pretty a- arrogant and thinks that he's going to defeat uh, uh, Yugi, and y- y- Yugi comes back. Well, and um, we are back after a small te- te- technical di- difficulty, and I want to go ahead and apologize for the feedback for the static that you're hearing from 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 Alex's mic, and we promise that the next time that we have a show, we will get uh get that fixed. Um, but getting back t- t- to it, um. Yugi comes back and he and he beats a Joey and Tristan and Taya pretty much make fun of a Joey. But in this duel, um, they actually start to explain the rules of the game and how and how it is played uh, briefly, um, which is very informative if you actually play the game and, and if you want to understand the the basis of the show. True. Um, and at this point, um, Yugi Moto and the, and his gang they go to his grandpa's game shop because Yugi wants to show him a rare card that his grandpa has. True. True. And when they get there, um, which card did did they end up seeing? The blue eyes white dragon. Now that there is a kick butt card, right? Yes, it is. Um, why don't you go ahead and explain how powerful this card is? Well, it's got eight stars, which in the which apparently in the first season meant nothing. Um, and three thousand attack points, making it pretty freaking powerful. So why would the eight stars not mean anything in the first season? Uh, well, the whole uh, trib- um, um, tri- tribute summons and all that. Okay. W- w- which means that you have to sacrifice cards that add up to eight stars or more in order to bring that card out? Well, um, for, for monsters over six stars, it requires two tri- tributes. Oh, okay. But five and six just take one. Right. Um... Well, right as they are about to, you know, oogle and ogle over this car, someone shows up in the form of Kaiba, Ka- uh, Seto Kaiba, who is a teenager, but yet he owns his own billion-dollar company. Lucky him. Yeah, it's very interesting. And what he wants to do is trade this whole briefcase full of powerful cards for the blue eyes wide, wide. Why dragon? And why don't you tell everybody what happens next? Well, Grandpa Moto um, says no, which I would have too. He already has three of them. Um, and that ticks off Kaiba. So after so after he he leaves, he's, he 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 sends his man to do his 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 um dirt, his dirty work for him, like all great villains do. Right. Okay, we are back and we got our te- our technical di- difficulty solved. At long Yay. last. Yay! Yes. Oh my God. Hooray! All right. Well, where we left off at, we were talking about um, Kaiba being denied the trade and purchase of Grandpa's. Do we even know Grandpa's real name, or is he just known as Grandpa? I don't think he ever learned his name. No. That's very in, in, interesting, but in, in, anyway, we um, lazy writing. Say what? Lazy writing, if you ask me. Well, I just think that you know they have a twenty-minute show; they gotta get get through the plot line of each show pretty uh, quickly. Um, but it turns out that Kaiba sends his goons to kidnap or trick. Or whatever, 
Grandpa into dueling him for their most powerful card, which turns out that Grandpa lost. And this is where, okay, I know that it's just a cartoon based, based on a game, but what gets me is that you is that Yugi Moto and his and his gang get gets a call from Kaiba to come to his his tower, his building, to come and pick up Grandpa, who is somehow what near death. I guess. Yeah, after playing a game. I mean, okay, it's meant for dr- dramatic effect, and it's and it's pretty cool. But that's just way too dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> And so he shakenly hands Yugi his deck and goes, I believe in you. You have With his last him. dying wish. Yeah. <laughs> so they rush. So Tristan and Taya, they rush Grandpa to the, to the ambulance. And Joey stays behind to root, for, to root for a Yugi. And that's when you find out that Kaiba has this arena that as they are playing their cards, it actually creates a simulation of the monsters that they are playing. Which is awesome. Which is friggin' aw- aw- awesome, and I would love if that, if, if that there was you no know, real, because I'd, I'd be playing every single day. I always wanted to see um, 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 Karate Man like that. Yeah. <laughs> so what they do is that... Um, Yugi and Kaiba, they begin a duel, I guess. Oh, oh and what be for that, Kaiba shows that he won Grandpa's Blue Eyes White Dragon, and we'll find out later why he does this, but he tears up the Accard. Ah, uh, that's just mean. Yeah, because you also know from earlier that there are only five, what, four? Four. Four. Blue Eyes White Dragon cards in existence. So you beat him and then you tear up his his card. Right. And what he says it? and he says that he does not want that card played against him. And you're like, hmm. I'm not sure I'm gonna like you so much, am I? <laughs> right. Um So they begin their duel and before they rush gra- grandpa off to the and Ambulance, Te- Teya y- 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 uses a, a marker to draw a special smiley face on everyone's hands, saying that this will connect them in friendship. Now, before we go any further, this show has been linked to controversy. It has? Yes, because parents and church ministers and preachers and that that said that the show in the game is very satanic because of because of the monsters and the magic that is used um my mom thought that except without the whole satan except without the whole um um, satanic part right well what gets me is that with the monsters you don't and it, it there is no gore in this show, you know, when a monster is destroyed or defeated, it there is no blood and guts. The the monster it, it actually just either just you know vanishes or breaks into pieces like glass. Um, and the whole story behind the show, the whole theme is not actually the cards or the game. It is a friendship that these four people create. And it's about how they will do anything for each other because they care about each other and that, and that they value their their a friendship. Which this smiley face that Taya draws is the beginning of that theme. True? True. And I think that, that there is a pretty good lesson to learn that being that being honorable and being and value of uh, uh, friendship is a pretty damn good thing in in uh, my in uh, my book. Yes, yes, it is. Um. So then they find out that you know 
then Kaiba and Yugi begins their match. And right as they begin it, um, somehow the Millennium Puzzle activates. <coughs> and Yugi is changed into Yami. 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 Yugi. Which, this is in the entire run of the, of the show. I think that this is the only time that someone actually reacts to the change from Yugi into the Afero. Everybody else is like, okay, I'm, I'm cool with this. Yeah, Kaiba vi visibly reacts, and I think, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but isn't that like the first, like the only time? Yeah, like pe people who have never met him before in his life see him change, and they're like, okay, so you're that kind of a person. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, I mean, because he is significantly taller and has a deeper voice. So I think that at one point Joey says that he uh, thinks that the taller guy is cooler. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and he and while we're watching this episode, you actually pointed out that that in the later e episodes, for the majority of the run, they use a different voice actor. Than in these first few episodes, is yeah, that like, right? Tristan has two di di different voice actors. Um, er early on, and then later on in the show, right? Yeah, early on, his voice sounds nasally, like a male Lois Griffin. And what about the 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 uh, Pharaoh's voice? I think the Pharaoh's voice remains the the same every time he's seen. Okay, so they didn't get a different a voice actor later on? No, I think everybody had the same voice actor but Tristan. Okay, well that that might be something that in a uh, you know in our in our next show that we might want to look up. Um so um the the duel goes on and at first Yugi has the upper hand, but then you find out that um, Kaiba has a blue eyes, white, white dragon, and he pulls that bad boy out and begins to kick butt. Also, Yugi doesn't really mention anything ab about it until they, until until later on in the duel. About his blue eyes, white uh, uh, dragon. Yeah, like he just stands there, like okay. He just happens to have one. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, and then later on, he pulls out a second blue still, eyes white dragon. Still no reaction. Right. Now, at this time, Yugi is starting to put, you know, cards in in defensive mode, so his life points are all are all safe. Um and you know at and during this time, he begins to draw these very weak cards, like one or two star cards that he has no idea how to use. And um, Arm, arms and legs. Yes, and which though the cards look pretty cool, they do. And um, um, then that's when Yugi pulls out. The swords of, of revealing light, which then causes his two dragons to not be able to attack for a few turns. Um, very, very convenient. Yes. Now, um, Kaiba can play other other cards, but he's not able to use those dragons. And the cards that he plays after the swords are played, he can actually attack with true i've i've noticed that that is the only time that's ever ha happened in the series well it seems to me like they were very lax on the rules for the first few e e episodes yeah um or maybe the rules hadn't been firmly established yet and they're just and like they went back and said okay you know how kaiba did did this yeah that not what really happens yes we, we made you look. <laughs> yes. Um, so then, 
um, kind of a plays. I forget which card that he that 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 he plays, and destroys one of Yugi's monsters, which brings him down to nine hundred points. I think it was that dark clown person. Uh, that might be. I don't really. I don't remember either. <laughs> Yeah, and but then at, in, in his next play, Yugi plays um, Dark Magician, which is our first sighting of this card, and he doesn't really re- react to it that you no, know, that strongly. But later on in the series, the Dark Magician becomes Yugi's favorite card. And it was my favorite too for a long time. Oh yeah, because because every time that he played that card, that means that he was going to kick yo that he's going to kick kick yo butt. But this time, you know, he didn't last but maybe one or two turns. Yeah, because guess what? Kaiba's the third blue eyes white dragon. That's right. So he has, so he had three of the four blue eyes white dragon cards. And that's why he wanted the the a fourth one to tear it up and say, "I'm sorry, but there shall only be three. I also find it funny that since they are so rare, why are they all in like a five mile radius of each other? Yeah, they like the like you know, Kaiba has he has a three of them, but he's also a billionaire, so he can afford to bring you know. Three of, of those cars two together, but it just seems weird that, of because it's because in the show the the game is pretty world, it's pretty world worldwide, right? Yes. And that just down the street of this game that is played all over the world and cars are sold all over the world, just down the street happens to be the fourth Blue Eyes White Dragon card. Just just so happens. That there's a blue eyes there. Yes, and and that's a very that's a very good point. I did not think about that. Kaiba's Kaiba's so rich that he can probably pay the creators to make three more. Yes, which we actually and at the end of the episode we meet the creator of the game, but that's later on. So now, Kai, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So now Kaiba has all three blue eyes white dragons on the field, and the swords card is gone. So he's about to attack and kick butt, but it is y- y- Yugi's turn. He's like, "Oh crap! What do I do now?" And so um, Yugi uh, looks at his. At, at, at his hand, and he has five cards in his hand, and four of them are arms and legs, two arms and two and two legs, and he doesn't know what to do because he doesn't have a card in his hand that can compare to three blue eyes wide wide dragons. He has like one monster card that he can that he can actually use, but that's about it. Yeah. And then he re and then he remembers something that his grandpa once told him, that some cards are used as a puzzle that they can be put together, and that's when he remembered Ex- Exodia, which is the one monster that is unstoppable. Why don't you explain to us what Exodia is? Exodia is like. He reminds me of uh, here. He reminds me of Thanos from the from the Marvel world, being extremely powerful and all that. Yes. So powerful that when he's summoned, it's game over. Okay, right. Because actually, in the card game, if he's summoned, then then the game is automatically over, and the person who summoned him wins, right? Right. And to and to bring him out, one must. Get all five of the pieces. Yeah, right. You must have all five in your hand, true? True. And in the show, no one's been able to do that. That's right. Because in the show, they say that no one has been able to 
draw all five cards and one duel. True? True. So Yugi calls upon the heart of the cards, which is the name of the um, episode, and um, and he and he and he draws the the fifth piece of of Exodia. To me, and, what the heart of the cards is is like, okay, plot, make me win. Yes. Um, just, just so, I mean, and this is the whole point of Yugi's dueling is that he believes. What does he believe? What is the heart of the cards? I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's when you have faith in your deck. It, I mean, that your deck is like has a force of its own that if you believe in it, it will help you. I think so. Okay. Um, so he has you no know, faith in his deck, and he pulls the the fifth the fifth piece, and um, that's when he tells Kaiba that you know it's over because he is going to summon the unstoppable Exodia, which he places all five cards on the field, and Exodia, the forbidden one, comes. Forth and destroys all three um, blue eyes, white dragons, in a move called obliterate. And Yugi gives one of the best phrases I've ever heard. <laughs> Wait, which is what? Exodia ob- obliterate. It, yes. In like this awesome deep voice, <clears throat> you just messed up, son, kind of tone. <laughs> Yeah, he pretty much just, uh, no, he's all badass, and I'm a man, and you are done. And Ooh. I I love how Exodia emerges, and then he's, you know, he has a chains on, and then he just, you know, shoots this friggin' gold <laughs> ball of whatever out uh, 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 of his hand, and... You see the the dragons being destroyed, and you know Kaiba's reaction to his hair is being blown back, and <laughs> he's like, "Ah!" Oh! Like a failed scientific ex- um, experiment. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, it was just wow. That was it's always fun seeing that. Yes. Um. And at the and somehow at the same time as that ha- happens grandpa wakes up and says yugi won it's like he somehow knows yeah like he has a big screen television in his brain and it's like a popcorn like okay i'm going to watch you do this yes and then you win i'm going to wake up um and then at the very end of the ep- episode you see someone named Maximilian Pegasus and you pretty much find out that Seda that Seda Sato Kaiba is the undefeated world cha- champion until now right of dual monsters and that he was just defeated by a kid named Ayugi and Pe- no a Pegasus finds out he smiles and then his his gold eye that he has flat flashes and then it's over. That must have been very painful putting in. Yes. Um But uh Yes, um I'm look I'm looking over these notes right here and Oh, there are some interesting stuff about like mistakes that were made in the show. Like, for example, when Yugi places a card and face down potion, and Kaiba destroys it with Seiji the Dark Clown, it is shown to be Sangen. However, um, in the commercial fade out immediately following the scene, Seiji is shown de- destroying Torik. 
So they just, you know, they had a little faux, faux paw there. Um, and in that there are two copies of the right arm of the forbidden one are shown. Um, one in Yugi's hand and the other when Yugi drew the same piece. So he had it in his hand and drew it at the same time as I, the producers of the show didn't uh, realize it. I had just unnoticed that. Yeah, you just re... I remember that, huh? I just unnoticed that. Didn't know um, it at all. <laughs> yeah, it's very strange. Well... Um, and that, you know, Sangin in this episode did not have and did not have an effect that was attributed to it, but in the actual game Sangin does. I have the card in here somewhere. Yes, but like eighteen copies. Yeah. <laughs> that's a very common card. And you mentioned this that the effect of the source of Vivian Light could not prevent monsters after its activation from from attacking, but in reality it does. Yes. Um, but yeah, okay, so that is the end of the first e episode that we watched. Now we will get to episode two, which is known as um, the trap of wait, the gauntlet of the gauntlet is 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 thrown, but in the Japanese of, of version, it is called the trap of the. Illusionist, no, no, no face. I like that one better. Yeah, it's very Japanese. Japanesey. <laughs> um, and in this one, you know, it starts. You know, y Yugi has already earned a reputation for de for defeating Kaiba. Um. And 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 it starts out back in class again. And Joey's is playing Taya this time, and she kicks his butt too. Yeah, he's not and, very good at this game. Yeah, you find out that he is not good at all. So, right. So what he wants to do? He wants Grandpa to. Teach him how to play. You know, he wants to train as a, a duelist, um, which Grandpa says is, is going to be very, very hard. It's going to take weeks and months, and you will never sleep. And and Joey's like, I will do anything. I don't really think it takes that much to learn how to, how to play a card game. Yes. Um, yeah, it's pretty silly. Unless it's a play on how Joey sucks. In that case, it'll take more than a few weeks. Well, you find out, yeah, because uh, Joey does suck because you find out that Taya beat him five times in a row. Plus, his deck is all monster cards. And yeah, you, you, you find out that he has no trap or magic cards anywhere in his in, in his in his deck. It's like he has a deck of brute. Of you know brute force, but there's nothing to, to, to you know back up the the a uh, cards. Um, I tried doing that once, and it was miserably failed. Yeah, you no know, trap cards will kick your butt every time. Especially with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you've been playing a lot longer than I have. Um, Plus, you're good with trap cards. Yeah, and I you, like trap cards. And defensive stuff. Well, I prefer a deck to be more defensive. I mean, it, everybody has their own style. And I prefer to have a much defensive deck. And then as I build my defense, I'll launch with, with an attack from behind that defense. Which and you are more style. of a... Um, Offensive-minded player player um and and you know there are there are times where you know because you you have a gift at building a deck a very offensive deck you have a gift at at that where you just have two maybe three extremely powerful cards 
but you also build it in a, in a way where it's easy for you to bring him out. Sadly, I seem to have misplaced my Dark Magician card. Well, we, we will have to find a way to replace that. Mm. Um, but getting back to, to the show, um, Yugi and his gang and, and also a grandpa are watching, what is it, the regional cha- championships on TV? Yes. And that is between who? Weevil Underwood and Rex Raptor. And these guys specialize in one type of card, right? Weevil is insect. Ra- Rex. I said Rex. Why did I say that? And Rex is dinosaur. Uh, isn't it funny that their names kind of <laughs> coincide with their type of card that they play? Rex, Weevil. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. very clever. Yeah. Well played. <laughs> um, it turns out that Weevil wins, right, by playing a very weaker monster than Rex, but he's he plays a magic card to attach it to his weak insect card and win. Yes. Um, and that's when Saito Kaiba, you know, find not Saito Kaiba, but Pe- no, a Pegasus hand is there, he gives him the a trophy, and then you find out that there's a new tournament going, going to be held. And where is it going to be held at? Duelist Kingdom. Ah. Which is like um, Pegasus' own personal Duelist Kingdom. Like, an, it's an island, right? Yes. But we'll find that out in another episode. But it's a, it's a, it's a big island where all the top players are invited to play. It's pretty cool. Yes, that whole series of shows, it, it, it's what, like six, seven shows? Yeah. That is all fantastic the, stuff. All of, the, all of the biggest things in the series have like ten episodes for a thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is some really great dueling there, too. I mean, it's, it's pretty... not like Dragon Ball Z where one fight lasts three episodes. Right. It, there's a big difference because they, you know, in like a three episode arc, you may have like 10 duels. Whereas you're right, in Dragon Ball Z, you'll have one fight that lasts forever. Yeah. The show is awesome, but it, but it lacks one thing having better fights. Yeah. Scenes. Um, as it, as it goes back to the show, um, you know, once he's announced that, then Grandpa shows up and says that Joey has been doing quite well in his in his training, that he is almost ready. And he hands Yugi a box that, that was sent that has a videotape in, in, in it. And what gets me is that it was a videotape. A videotape. As I don't, I mean... I barely remember videotapes. What had happened was in this videotape, they Yugi is a Yugi duels a videotape. Yes, it's actually Pegasus, um, and he uses the power of that gold eye, which you find out is a piece of the Millennium Puzzle. I mean, a is a Millennium item? item. Is that what it's called? Yeah, um, that. Item. You know, he he explains that um, he did not actually invent the game. That the game has had has been around for thousands of years, played by very powerful people with real monsters. What what I don't get is that after he explained that that he's not the 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 creator, everybody still thinks of him as the creator. Well, I think that he only tells that to Yugi because they were in that shadow realm place. Yeah, no one can hear them. Right, and he was, and the and his friends were, you know, a frozen. Um, and that there was this pharaoh that managed to lock away all the monsters, and these millennium items, which what they help control the monsters or something. I think so. Um, and that um, there are 
what, seven? Is it, 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 is it seven? I believe so. Yeah. So far, I know two of them. And and they are what? There's a puzzle, an eye. I think there's a staff at some point. Yes. Some kind of a scale. Uh-huh. A harmonica. And a taco. A taco. <laughs> a golden taco. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um... Yugi has the Millennium Puzzle, which is a, what, a pyramid type thing? Yes. And uh, Pegasus has the Millennium Eye. Which can apparently help, 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 help him see through paper. Well, what this does is that it helps him, I think, foretell the future because he's able to plan out this duel and record it on videotape send it to a Yugi and then have him duel the videotape and still beat him. That must have been awkward to have him to have um, recorded. Yes. Um, that was because, you know, he keeps using his eye on the videotape to predict which card y- Yugi will play, and he's able to counter that card. Except for when Yugi gets smart and... Uh, doesn't look at his card. He just grabs one, plays it down. Yeah. Um, it had been fun. It was like a spell card or a trap card that, that he placed. Um, yeah, he just happened to place it. Home. That's right. He happened to place it in the in the monster zone, and then he flips it over, and it would just happen to be a, a monster card. It just happened to be Dark Magician, too. That's right. Um, Coincidence? I think not. Yeah, <laughs> which he's able to play without sacrificing anything. Um, but that's actually a very good scene because it kind of shows that he's that the pharaoh is able to think and try, you know, try try to outsmart this videotape. He is very <laughs> in- intelligent to yes. be able to outsmart to be able to, out, to be able to outsmart a tape. Yeah. But um, just just before he he can attack, you know, time ends, he was and because so close to beating him. say what? He was so close to beating him. Yes, I know. Um, but because Pegasus had more life points than he automatically um, wins, and that's when he tells him that he is invited to the tournament, and in order to make sure that he comes, he steals the soul of Grandpa. In the staticky Slenderman style ending. Yes. Now Yugi. Um, <laughs> so that, dramatic. Yeah, and um, that's why in, in the box, along with the videotape, were this glove and two stars. Apparently, you have to have those things in order to be in the a tournament. Didn't Joey uh, participate in that t- tournament too? Oh, you mean in the um, Duel of Kingdom thing? I believe so. Yeah, I, in fact, I, I believe that he does from. quite well in, in it. I, I believe, but that's a spoiler, so you know, blah. Where did his glove and stars come from? Then he didn't get a package. I think that we'll find out in the in the later shows. In fact, we'll probably find find out in episode three. On our next show, we 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 will do episode three and and four. Um. And, I, and that's probably when we will find 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 out. I I I hope so because that's very weird. Yeah. For lack of better words. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. Um. And in this episode, the duels were they follow the earlier dual monster rule so 2000 life points instead of 8000 8, and tributes are not required for level 5 or higher uh, uh, uh monster so apparently you know there was a time the rules actually stated that you did not have to tribute anything that you could just play any that monster was- that you wanted and and that the players could not attack each other directly. Oh, that would, that would, that would have been helpful in the Power of Chaos series. Yes. Um. Some of the 
faux pas is that the Kamori Dragon actually has 1,700 instead of the 1,500 that it, that it that it was shown. Um, the uh, poster that Grandpa was putting up was of the Black, Black Luster Luster Soldier. Soldier. Yes. Um, and a reference to episode 30 and Harpy's Pet Dragon. And the Japanese version is actually an, an advertisement for an upcoming National Duel Monsters tournament. So either way, something's being spoiled. Yes. Um, and the English version, Pegasus tells Yugi about Egypt, the Shadow Realm, and the Millennium Items. And the Japanese version, he tells Yugi about the upcoming tournament. Um, when Pegasus tells Yugi that the, that the world that they're in is called the Shadow Realm, a pyramid is added o- over the shot of Pegasus and the, and the U.S. version. Um, it is. Yeah. Um, another di- a, a difference between the two is that after he, de- he defeats Silver Fang, Pe- Pegasus g- giggles, saying that the monsters are quite real and quite dangerous. He tells Yugi Boy that he's, <laughs> yeah, that he's quite entertaining, so, so defiant, yet, yet helpless. Um, and completely I- I- ignorant of the power of his Millennium Puzzle. And, and the Japanese of, of version, Pe- Pegasus says that he's glad he came to Japan and then giggles saying, joke, it's a joke in English. And, the, and, and Japanese, Pegasus is an American and often speaks he- heavily accented English. Okay, well, we are back again. Um, we had a plane fly by, and somehow it shook the house and knocked off the the uh, Wi-Fi. So we are back up a a, a again. Dumb plane. Yeah. Um, At nine eleven, this happens. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, we were just fi- uh, finish up the a uh, difference between the American and the um, the Japanese a uh, uh, version. Um, there were no mistakes made in this in this episode. Um, there are quite a few uh, differences between the actual card game and the uh, and the show, but I don't think that we'll get any into that. It's not really that important. Um, why, why don't you give us your overall opinion of the first two episodes? Well, I think it's a great way to start out the series, except for one thing. Yeah. They probably should have, well, um, at at the beginning of episode two, b- b- before the main title, they gave a brief info about the uh, puzzles and stuff. Right. They should have had that at the beginning of episode one. That would have made a lot more sense. Right, because you wouldn't have as much confusion. Um, yeah, like when I first saw it, I re- I remember thinking, so where'd that puzzle come from? Absolutely. That's my best impression of five-year-old me. Yeah, you were. That was a long time ago. Good lord. But um, yeah, I I agree. The first two episodes were really really good. There was some confusing things that they um, covered in episode two that that should have been done in episode one. Um, but overall, it was very, very good. Um, I also don't understand why Pegasus has to add the word boy to the end of the word that he says. I think that he's just trying to in, insult him because, I mean, Pegasus, Pe- 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 Pegasus is much older, and Yugi's a, you know, what, a teen? He's still so, in high school? He's a... Well, he's a pretty short teen that apparently hasn't gone through puberty yet. Yeah, I, I think that he's just being very snobby. I always thought Pegasus was kind of gay. 
Well, you find what? out later that he's not. Um, from with from from him. from the way that he talks and some and some and sometimes acts. I kind of gave me that impression. I I think that he's just very flamboyant. Very much so. Because um, I mean, he created a a worldwide phenomenon, so he's pretty much worth what unlimited money. Trillions. Yeah. Um, Bill Gates. <laughs> oh, Bill Gates could not touch him. Eat your heart out, good Bill Gates. Yes. But we are approaching an hour, and I think that that's pretty much going to be good for um for each for each of our eb- eb- episodes um you can find us on uh screechingdog.com um if you want to help us out you can find us on i on iTunes um and there you can give us feedback you can give us a a rating which will help us make the show better Very so much that so. you know yes so that we will know what to improve um you can find us on Stitcher you can find us on Windows Store um if you have any kind of podcasting app you just type you just type in king king of games and you will find us there um if you wish to you know to support us financially we are a part of this amazing program called a pay called a patreon which you can find more info on our on our on our our website um it is a crowdfunding um program where people are able to donate a dollar five dollars a a month and they will get you know perks and rewards and that pretty much helps us keep screeching dog dot 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 com going because we are trying to we are trying we are trying to produce at least five or six shows and that cost bandwidth, and bandwidth is not cheap. What um, is bandwidth? Bandwidth is that's a very good a question. Bandwidth, I I will explain it very sim- uh, simply and easy to understand. Like, have you ever downloaded a song or a video from from a from a a website? Can't say I have, because I haven't. Um, but but you know what I mean, right? I know what you mean, yes, sir. The actual down downloading from the from the server that the website is on, like ours, to your to your device, whether it's your computer, laptop, tablet, or a phone, um, that is bandwidth, and it is. Like if you were to stream Netflix on your com- on your computer, that's bandwidth. Okay, the actual the actual I don't know a streaming. Oh. Uh, yes, and that there cost cost money. If you were to download, you know, if you were to get on on iTunes and download this episode to your phone, you are using a bandwidth that we are providing you the consumer to download the show and that there cost money um, because we have to pay the service to use that bandwidth Um, so we're paying them to pay the audience to pay to listen to us well no one is getting paid but the people that is that is providing us the the service to down for our for our uh, listeners to you know download the uh, show and what patreon does it allows our listeners to you know contribute to help be a part of the show we actually have goals like if we meet a certain goal 
then we can upgrade our our e equipment like buy new mics or whatever and we we'll, and we'll actually have certain re 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 awards if you donate a certain amount like if you donate um a hundred dollars per month then you can actually be a part of any one of the of the podcast once a a month because be because you will be a, a sponsor of that of that podcast for that a season um which is awesome but like i said you can find more details at a screeching dog dot com where you'll where you'll find our support us link and from there that will lead you to our a patreon page um which is our primary source for funding the entire network we and no matter you you do not have to uh, donate um at all you can just continue to listen to all of our great shows absolutely free and they will and they will always be free cool yes because no this is what this is what this here is what is what we do and we love it and we will and we will always do it true true um so this is the end of this episode um you will be able to find alex again uh, not this upcoming weekend, but the weekend after, after after that. But you will, but he will be doing one more show this 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 weekend on the Movie Central podcast, where we are going to discuss one of our favorite movies mm-hmm. of all of all time, and is very personal for us. Yes, the A King Speech. And if I you love want, that movie. Yes, and if you want to understand why this movie is so is so important to us, and why it means so much to us, then take take a gander, look up Movie Essential on on you know iTunes or go to our website or whatever. Listen to the show. It's going to be pretty significant and. Um, we're going to enthir- we uh, are going to uh, thoroughly enjoy doing this show. Yes. So until next time, uh, we will talk to you guys later. Say bye bye, Alex. Bye. <laughs>
Thank you.